everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I thought we would um, continue through Junermond um, by looking at, um, yesterday we looked at the three happy cards, right? Um, just to kind of see what those nuances um, might be. And so today, I thought we would take a look at three of the more uh, difficult cards that we're taking something away or ending something. Now obviously we also have the clouds card and that things of that nature, um, but here we're kind of looking at what what is an ending. The clouds card is kind of an obscuring cloud. Uh, the cross card is weighting something down. But here we have the coffin, which is an end. We have the scythe, which is a painful cutting and a cutting away, a cutting off. Um, with a, with some nuances there, which we'll talk about in a minute. And the mice then traditionally are, again, taking away. They are uh, eating away at taking, stealing, uh, pulling something away. And so not really an ending, but kind of a removing and a taking away. And this is more of a cutting away. And this is just like a full stop. So I thought we would just take a look at these three cards today and just kind of see uh, how they are different as we did uh, yesterday with the three happy cards. Um, so I pulled again three cards from different decks. Uh, I have from the um, Mystical Lenormand uh, here, here, and here. Uh, we have from the Dreaming Way Lenormand here, here, and here. And then I have from the Celtic Lenormand um, on these cards. And then, um, as before, with the way that I have uh, portrayed them in my Lenormand deck, the Story in Co Color, the Story in Color Lenormand. So let's take a look at first of all at the sort of big daddy right the big daddy ending card which would be the coffin card so here in the mystical and norman we can see sort of a egyptian sarcophagus uh the dreaming way has quite an interesting variation on that with a person in a sardine can um, but it's probably the only it, I, I'm pretty sure it's the only death card that I have that actually has a body in the casket, I think. Um, generally, you're just seeing a casket. Um, and then the Celtic Lenormand, because they wouldn't have buried their pe you know, people, their dead, in a uh, coffin or a casket, has sort of a burrow where they would have placed their dead, which is really gorgeous. This is one of my favorite coffin cards. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about that one in my favorites, but this is one of my favorites. It's absolutely beautiful. But they all mean the same thing, right? They're an ending. Oh, and of course, in mine is simply black. Now, in person, there's actually variation to the black. There are strokes. This was painted. Um, it's not just like a digital black, but it is black. Uh, because for me, uh, the coffin card, and traditionally, the coffin card is an ending. It's, you know, coming to an end. Um, however, uh, that isn't necessarily negative because the question becomes what is coming to an end and I think that this has to is one of those questions that we have to ask with, with a lot of different cards right um, not just to take them as good and bad and we're going to talk a little bit more about that because one of my favorite things is a, is a chapter that um, Andy Borjnevica which I always slaughter his name if I just call him Mr. Andy um, who has put, uh, he has a chapter in his book about, you know, we kind of think of cards as positive or negative, um, and then maybe some that are neutral. He kind of looks at the cards as positive, uh, positive, neutral, 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 negative, and negative. Now, I, I put my card, a couple of my cards um, in different categories, but I really like that understanding that Lenormand really isn't this is positive and this is negative. Um, there is a very, <laughs> there is a variation um, of energy across the cards. It's much more subtle and much more nuanced, I think, than people give uh, it credit for. For me, the uh, coffin card is one of the most neutral cards, even though it would definitely traditionally be placed in the negative card, um, because I really have you have to ask yourself what's ending. If there is sickness that is ending, that's a good thing, right? If there's happiness that's ending, that's not a good thing. Um, for me, it's a period. It's one of the reasons that it's painted. It's the only, I 
think it's the only one in my deck that's just one straight color, right? Um, well, the clover, because it's just beautiful happiness, but the salt kind of changed the, the tones in the clover card. Um, but anyways, it's the idea of a period at the end. Something has come to an end, whether that's positive, negative, or generally it's not going to be neutral, but it could be. Um, it is up to what are the cards surrounding it. So that's what the coffin card is. The coffin card um, is not a, har a harbinger of death. The coffin card, it says something has come to an end. And what is that? And what are the what are what is coming to an end? And what are what are the consequences of that? What does that mean uh, to the situation? Um, it could again, repeating myself, but it could be a good thing for something to come to an end, and it could also be a negative thing for something to come to an end. So I really see the coffin card as quite neutral, whereas for me the mouse card is something that is being stolen away, something is being taken away. Uh, so in a sense, coming to it, you're losing something, right? There is a loss that comes with the mouse card. Now, that can still, technically, not always be a bad thing. If, if you have um, the clouds being eaten away at, right? We may start to see some things that um, are getting pulled away and getting you know, chewed away at. Well, if it's chewing away at, at the clouds or if it's chewing away at the cross, uh, that may be something that we, we don't mind to have eaten away. Um, generally, the mouse card, for me, experientially, is a little bit less neutral and that it generally does speak to negative things. Uh, so in my card, I ended up painting that as that sort of almost... You know, I couldn't obviously put acid on the paper <laughs> or else it would eat a hole through it. But it's to give that sort of feeling of when you splot something corrosive that's just eating eating away um, at what's around it. And perhaps the, the positive things around it are being um, eaten away and dissolved. Um, so is there is that sense of loss there. But again, you always have to think in context of, of the cards themselves. What is being eaten away? Um, is that good to be, we start to remove um, the burdens and the difficulties? Or is it saying that the eating away is causing the burdens? Um, so there's variety, just as we talked about in the, the intuition one, depending what is the question, right? What is the sequence of cards? What are the cards on either side? What are touching those cards? Uh, but we definitely have with the mouse card that sense of something being eaten away, something being stolen, something being taken. Um, whereas with the, the coffin, it's a stop. It's an end. Something is stopped full stop, whatever's going on, bam, we've got a period at the end of the sentence, right? Quite different. The scythe card is probably one of the two cards in, in Lenormand that I probably read, I don't even want to say the least traditionally because the idea of harvest is part of the traditional scythe card. Um, but the scythe card, uh, if you look at most images of the scythe card, we have a scythe. So in the Celtic Lenormand here is an actual scythe, and you can see it's quite sharp, quite pointed on one end, quite blunt on another end. You could bash somebody in the head. You could cut somebody. You could certainly chop their head off or stab them with it. But what is it for? I mean, look at, we have the harvest bales here. Uh, here, we don't have so much the idea of harvest. We pretty much just have a scythe here. Um, and in this one, uh, we do see there's the ox carrying this huge bale of hay that this obviously someone has used this scythe to um, harvest. Now, uh, we've had discussions about this in chats and things, and there is that idea in, in sort of the French Revolution and these time periods in which uh, take up your plowshares, that idea of, of take up your plowshares, take up your scythe, take up your hose, um, take up your pitchforks and use those instead of implements of... Um, uh, gardening or harvest be using them in terms of weapons so there's certainly uh, a history of um, the, that type of connotations but if you look at the images of most um, scythe cards it either just has a scythe um, but very often there is some type of a wheat uh, or harvest that is nearby and so the way that I read this is that um, idea of Yes, it can be quite painful. It is definitely a cutting. 
Uh, there is a uh, cutting away for sure. Uh, there is certainly, here's the maybe Lenormand as well. We can see the wheat sheath is still there also. Um, so we have that idea of chopping away, cutting away, uh, slicing, sharpness, cutting, bluntness on one end. Painful, right? If you get caught by this knife, it's going to be painful. And yet it is bringing in the harvest. What is it harvesting? Um, so I tend to look at this. Um, sorry, my phone. thought I needed it. Um, it is the idea that something is ending, something is being cut away, something is perhaps painful, a painful situation. But the, the thing is, is that it's going to reap harvest. It's bringing something to you. What is it bringing to you? What is the uh, what is the benefit that you're getting out of the situation? Even though it might be difficult, at the very least, it might be a lot of work. If you think about harvesting uh, wheat and that kind of thing, at the very least, it's going to take a lot of work to bring that harvest in at the, um, you know, at the worst case scenario it's going to be quite painful but you're going to gain something from the situation so this is a stealing away this is something coming in and taking away just how we talked about with the happy cars where the bouquet is being sent to you right uh, this is outside forces kind of coming in and taking uh, taking away from you um, just as for this, uh, for the coffin card, as we talked about with the sun card, right? The sun card is just that kind of overarching larger energy of the sun that is just happiness, right? Whereas this is sort of, this is just a larger um, kind of outside of your control. It's just, it's, it is a thing. It is, it is a force of its own. When you think about death as being a force of its own, right? It's just that stop. It is just that ending that just occurs. Whereas this is something, somebody or something is taking something from you. And then the scythe card, uh, we can compare to the, a little bit to the clover. The clover is about that happiness that comes, uh, though, from paying attention. You're kind of going about your business and you're being mindful. And what are you doing? You're gaining this, you're finding this, oh, there is that piece of luck. Whereas a scythe is something that you're doing, you're either you know reaping the harvest in, right? There is some degree of work, and there's some degree of um, payment, I guess, in some sort. There is that that difficulty there, but you're going to get something out of it. A connotation, so not an exact fit to the the clover, sun, and uh, bouquet, but similar in that we think about how is it happening. Um, how, what, what's going on and what is, um, what is in your control and what is not in your control. Um, ways to look at these three cards, but they are quite different. So these are not repeated energies. Um, these are different energies um, that are approaching things being in some way taken away. This is, you're cutting something down, but what you're gaining from it. This is something that's being removed and taken away perhaps by somebody or something in some other situation. And this is just a force of nature that's just putting a stop, right? There's just an end uh, coming to whatever the situation is. Um, and whatever it is that's being um, ended is going to tell us whether, and depending on the question, is going to tell us whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. Now again, as with all my videos, these are just um, musings on these cards from my own perspective. And not everybody uh, has to share that perspective. Um, but, um, and so, you know, you can, you can find obviously 10 different people um, that are gonna read things 10 different ways, and that's okay. Um, so I'm not tr trying to argue that this is the only way to view these cards, um, but I am just kind of, um, just talking about how I see these particular cards. And as with all the Norman cards, I think that seeing the death card or the coffin card in tarot or Lenormand or Kipper um, or any of these systems um, 
It doesn't need to be that dun 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 moment. Now that doesn't mean that it's not negative because it very well could be negative, but that's not the first place we go. We always, especially with Lenormand, um, we always have to look in context of the cards that are around it and the house that it's in. We'll talk about houses at, at a later time. If you're reading with houses, you're looking at what house it's in. If you're not, you're looking at what cards are next to it. What is the question? What are the cards next to it? And we're gaining a, a bigger picture from that because we don't we don't read Lenormand by one card, um, and so it's always going to be in context, and there's always going to be a spectrum of meanings that could come up, and that is the beauty of this system. But I, I hope between yesterday's happiness cards and and this one sort of cutting and ending and stealing kind of cards that you can start to see there are a lot of nuances to Lenormand and uh, I have actually heard some people uh, say that card systems like Kipper and Lenormand these types of things can be um, imbalanced to negative readings and I would definitely say experientially and just by the cards themselves that that's actually not true. There's quite a balance to positive, neutral, and negative cards. If anything, I think when I did it, it's maybe a little swung more towards neutral. Um, but we'll, we'll go over that in a different, uh, a different video when we talk about those more in depth. Um, but so there we have it. I look at the kind of uh, cutting and taking away and ending cards um, and we will take a look at the other um, cards such as the clouds and the um, cross in, in different contexts um, but I wanted to just use these sort of in counterbalance to yesterday's happiness cards um, just to see uh, the nuances uh, that Lenormand has to offer to a reading and to the always come to the table thinking, okay, well, how, how does this work? Just because the coffin is in a reading doesn't mean that the whole reading is now uh, a negative one because we've got to look and see what's going on in this. What's the question? Do we want that to come to an end um, and, and kind of work from there? So I hope that this has been interesting and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.